Hi everyone, this is Wayne Eckerson of Eckerson Group, here to talk about AI is the new BI. And with me today is Patrick Spedding of Rocket Software. Uh, he's gonna demonstrate to us IBM QMF Vision, which is an OEM version of a BI software that Rocket has built um, and IBM is reselling. So Patrick, it's all yours. Thanks, Wayne. So I'm just gonna give a, a couple of examples here um, to show how we've started using analytics um, to uh, augment uh, BI so to sort of enrich and, and um, add value to uh, the BI platform to allow users to, to basically get to a decision quicker. So QMF, um, as uh, some people may know, is a, a product IBM uh, sells for its mainframe customers. And, um, and what we have in this particular module I'm gonna be showing is a, a QMF Vision component, which provides self-service capabilities for data from the mainframe, but not just the mainframe, also can connect to other sources, you know, SQL Server, spreadsheets, and so on, but it allows people to pull data into an interface to be able to visualize it. So in this particular um, example that I have here, I've got a, um, a vSUM file coming from the mainframe. I've got a TM1 cube, uh, IBM Cognos TM1. I've got a Cognos Power Cube, a SQL Server source, and a spreadsheet that have been pulled into this one dashboard. And from which point I can then start to analyze and, and um, even look, you know, filter based on common dimensions and so on. So that that's great. but what we've been looking at is how we can speed the process that a user has to take to actually build a dashboard such as this um, by leveraging uh, AI and analytics in the process. So if we were to um, pick up, I'll give a couple of examples here. The first example, I'm just going to pick up a, a CSV file of um, sales information. And all I'm going to do is drop this into the drop zone over here. Uh, now, the first thing it's doing is it's actually detected that the file has already been uh, in included before. Uh, I've, I've uploaded this file before. So it's actually helping me to, to even initially look at um, trying to avoid content duplication by detecting that the file already exists and do I want to use the existing file or should I bring it in again, which, which I'm going to do. Now, when it connects to the file, it's actually, instead of just dropping me into an authoring interface, which is uh, typically what BI tools have done over the years, what it's actually doing here is actually asking me to choose the focus of my analysis for this file. So if we think about sales data, typically that information has an element of time in it. The sales have occurred over a time period that they've um, perhaps occurred in a different location. So there's an element of, of uh, geographic uh, location intelligence that we could leverage. There is um, potentially hierarchies related to product information or customer, customer segment. There's a lot of different aspects to the data. So if I choose profit margin as, as the target of my analysis and then click create, then what it's going to do is actually look through the data as it ingests to try and figure out what would, what statistically are some of the more significant uh, pieces of information that I should be looking at. Because too often I think we, we um, leave it to the user to, to have to do everything manually to build up um, their analysis. So being able to automate that process uh, is very value add for the user to be able to bring in and, and automatically see, for example, what's the most significant dimension, the number of KPIs across the top, the number of rows, and so on. The information that's, that was geographic, um, automatically built in as a hierarchy. Um, so understanding the cardinality and understanding um, relationships, correlations between columns within a spreadsheet effectively as has been done um, looking for outliers as we can see over here one particular value uh, one particular month has been um, highlighted uh, statistically as being an outlier so we again we didn't have to do that manually it's bubbled that straight up to us and as we scroll down we can see another of an other perspective so for example it's looking at what's the most significant other measure based off of the measure we chose as our target and are there any clusters 
that we could be looking at um, what's the most significant context or dimension, which happens in this particular case to be location, and giving us a um, box plot view of that. But all of this also being interactive, such that I can drill on things. So now that it's actually spotted that there are some hierarchies in the data, allowing me to be able to drill down into that and see how that affects the information that we're looking at. So now we can actually see the US states within the US that were highlighted as being, um, uh, again, color coded based on that uh, measure we chose. We can see the relationship between what we selected and the overall full set of data, which shows the outlier. So we can sort of see if that's being caused by that particular country and so on. So we've already got a fairly interactive um, view and we're getting a very quick start um, way of being able to analyze the data. So it's good for prototyping and iterating. But the great thing about this is that these um, dashboards are also highly interactive. So for example here, if I want to insert another data source, I can simply um, do that by editing this. So it's not a static template dashboard. It's actually something that I can actually work with to enhance and enrich. So let me just simply do that here, just, just by way of example. So I could come in and choose another source that we have available to us, um, such as a budgeting environment. Um, and we can then choose perhaps a cube, budgeting cube, and then say, okay, and bring that in to the uh, dashboard, as simple as that. Oops, there we go. So now I've got a dashboard that's been automatically built by the system um, based off the spreadsheet of sales data that I brought in and I've now actually added in some financial information coming live from a TM1 budgeting system and we can interact with that as well. So we're now just looking at actual versus budget for each of the different um, items in the chart of accounts. And so you can sort of see how, how easy it was for me to go from nothing to insight. And that's really one of the key things that we've been um, trying to achieve with, with this particular type of approach. Now, the other aspect that we've been looking at is how can we then collaborate with this information? How can we share this information um, and get insights um, from a team perspective, not just an individual perspective? So, what um, I'll do here is if we were to um, come to um, a dashboard on this other server that's hooked up with a collaboration system, um, I'll just pull up this particular dashboard. We, again, we can sort of see this is an interactive dashboard, um, which is showing me some information of sales data, and we're visualizing it based on um, a couple of dimensions, the sales channel and the customer. In other words, you know, which customers are um, selling to, to uh, or which sales channels are selling to which customers and so on. We can, we can look at that. Now, if I wanted to share this, it's simply a case of coming in and publishing this to a channel. So think of this as being like publishing to a Slack channel. And I've now simply published that in this particular case to IBM's Watson workspace. Now, the reason I chose this particular collaboration interface is because this also has AI infused in it to allow us to do uh, more cognitive collaboration. So if I just, we can see the one that I've just published here um, is bolded here because I've just added that um, dashboard to the team space. And there's the file that I just published. Now, the interesting thing about this is that um, in this particular interface here, one of the challenges with collaboration tools, well, I mean, they, they've first of all tried to overcome challenges with email, but these, these tools often have so much textual information that it can become difficult to be able to find those insights. So the things that we've 
been looking at is how can we better integrate our discussion threads and teamwork and team spaces with our BI um, so that maybe that's a, uh, possibly just by allowing a user to um, simply view and interact with the BI system directly from the collaboration space. So, you know, where are my dashboards, for example, and can I um, simply populate a dashboard straight into the space? That'd be one way. So I'm actually leveraging um, APIs to be able to just simply interact directly from this collaboration environment. And now we can see the new dashboard that we've just published. Or being able to use uh, Watson textual analytics to be able to summarize a team space down to just the key moments that have occurred and key discussions. For perhaps I've been on vacation and I've come back and I want to see what's actually been happening um, while I've been away. In this case, we can just see a lot of alerts and I'll get to those alerts in a second, but we can see that my action, which was showing me my dashboard is now highlighted as an action. Um, if we were to come to a different space here where there's been a, a discussion between a number of different parties, we can sort of see the members across the top and then just have it um, leverage the, the Watson analytics to try and uh, aggregate that discussion into its key um, topics. We can sort of see that there's um, been an issue around deliveries and complaints um, back on the 5th, the 7th of February, for example, and we can just sort of get a, a, a visual overview of what's been going on. And then when we find an area that we want to expand, we can then just jump straight into it and see any actions and commitments, any spreadsheets that have been shared, that sort of thing. So again, it's using AI to help us find the nuggets of, of value in the information that's been shared with us. Now, as I mentioned before, if we come back to the one I just published to, we saw that there was quite a few um, alerts that have been um, shared here. So let me just um, turn off the summarization. Um, and we can sort of see here that um, we've got a number of dashboards, that have, exceptions that have been triggered by a dashboard. So perhaps we want to go and investigate um, where that's been coming from. So if we take an example like this, which is a finance dashboard, which is the one that was used to, um, to generate those exceptions, then let's just wait for this to refresh. Again, we've got a fairly uh, interactive dashboard here with a number of different views of data, uh, financial information, and we've got a KPI at the bottom here, which is demonstrating that we've got, again, we've got an outlier. Um, so if we were to just have a look at that and see how that was set up. So how can we actually facilitate, better facilitate management by exception? So we've got the outlier that's been set up here um, simply by enabling alerts on this KPI, um, which was built. And instead of building it based on a pre-formatted value, such as if revenue drops below 10% um, or drops below a million or whatever it happens to be, we're just actually going to allow it to do outlier detection on the KPI itself and then simply set up a schedule for when that um, outlier um, should be evaluated. So we're going to say, look at this daily, perhaps before I get to work every morning and then send an email or send the uh, alert if there is one to that space uh, within the collaboration tool of choice, be at Slack or uh, Watson Workspace or Connections or whatever. So again, being able to be smarter so that the user isn't overwhelmed with information, um, but actually just gets the key uh, insights that are going to be um, valuable to them in that moment. So Wayne, I think that, that hopefully gives you a good overview of some of the capabilities that, we've, um, that we have in um, QMF Vision. And, yeah, that, um, that's, uh, that, that's great. You know, it's a unique, unique twist. I uh, haven't seen anyone demonstrate uh, the integration with uh, collaboration software and the setting of alerts. I always thought that best dashboard was one that found you when there was something worth looking at. So you've, you've gone and done that. So that's great. So listen, thanks for your time and I uh, hope everyone gets a lot of value out of this demo.